Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. It is so good to be here once again, man. It's, I just always look forward to just having a chance to just share the word of God, man. I, and I'm so thankful for Kingdom Broadcasting Network. We're here in His Image Christ International Ministries, and we just want to continue to just stay in that vein of making sure that there is just relevant in, in information that will actually help you, that will aid, that will guide, that will give instruction because we believe that we serve a living God in the name of Jesus. Remember, the word says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded the mouth of God. On the last broadcast, we had been talking about Joseph. Remember, I told you all that I really do believe that the experiences and the transitions that Joseph has been through. I really do believe that it can be equated to about four different coats, if you would, four different transitions. And I believe that it's like four coats that he had that can be explained through the various experiences that he had in his life. I believe that first coat, like we got a chance to talk about before was basically talking about the coat of many colors, the first one that we was able to see physically and tangibly. And then after he lost that first coat, remember, he had to learn how to survive. The Bible says that when Joseph, because of the words that came from his mouth, because of the dreams that he had, the Bible says that his own brothers hated him. They hated him. They schemed. They plotted and planned to see what they could do to kill and to silence the, the, the dreams and the purpose that was on the inside of him. And, and see, that's one of the things we have to understand that the very thing that God is going to use on the inside of you, that's going to bring life, that's going to cause others to flourish, that's going to cause your your leaves to remain green. The purpose you have to understand, that's the very thing that the enemy is against, because the Bible says in, in the book of Isaiah that there is gross darkness upon the land. He's not just talking about the sun going down and and it just being a physical darkness. It's talking about a spiritual darkness, a spiritual separation, because so many people are clueless when it comes down to true fellowship with the father. So I want you to know that because we have that purpose, we have this treasure hidden in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. I want you to know that as long as you walk in that purpose, the light will shine or the sun, the S-O-N, hallelujah, will shine in and through each one of us. It's such a blessing to have you here with us once again. And I just want to just continue to encourage you just by just helping you to know and understand that in every phase of life, there is a lesson that needs to be learned. The Bible says that Joseph, after that first coat was destroyed, his brothers came up with a plan. They said that we're going to say that 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 some beast must have came and devoured him. They shredded the coat up, dipped it in goat's blood. And then they asked their father, they said, who do you suppose this belongs to? Can you imagine that? Who do you suppose this belongs to? And Jacob says, surely it is my son's coat. Surely there is no more left to my son. Man, let me tell you all something. There will always be situations and circumstances that would make it appear as if you did not survive that last battle. Hallelujah. I understand you have something before you. I understand that there's challenges that are resting before you right now, but let me encourage you right now. There was other battles that you had before that the enemy wanted other people to believe that there was no way for your natural survival. And yet God has has performed his word once again. He has he has done the miraculous again in that he preserved your life. Hallelujah. And even as Joseph was being preserved. The Bible says he was sold as a slave. I left off where we were talking about the fact that he was a slave. He was in Potiphar's house. And the Bible says that not only did Potiphar recognize that there was an anointing on him, but the Bible says that God favored Joseph. He said that everything in the house Begin to be assigned to Joseph. The Bible says that Potiphar didn't know anything about his house. He didn't know what was going on. He didn't know what he had. It's like he didn't even know how much money he had. 
because Joseph was over everything. Every, the Bible says he didn't even know how much bread he had, what he was going to eat because Potiphar was over everything. You know what that means? That means whatever position you get in, I don't care how much you think it's the bottom. You better believe the Lord is going to cause you to be the top of that bottom. I might feel like I'm at the bottom, but but just say this: say I'm at the top of that bottom. You know what? I might feel like I'm at the I'm, and I'm on the bottom right now, but I'm on the top of this bottom because the Bible says that when Joseph was in Potiphar's house, the Bible says everything in his house was under Joseph's authority. Hallelujah. Come on. That's something good for you to remind yourself right there. Remind yourself. That you are at the top of this bottom. And you know what? Just like the enemy. Just like God's purpose. He's at the top of that place. But guess what? He still has more places that he needs to go. It's almost like his head is already on the ceiling. Some of you are wondering why are things starting to fall apart in your life right now. And I venture to let you know that evidently we're at a position where your head has has kind of hit like a glass roof because you can't go any higher. And a lot of times before you go higher, it's like taking a step down again. Don't you realize that's the very thing that happened with Joseph? Because the Bible says wherever there is elevation, wherever there is anointing, you better believe there will be lust. There will be greed. People will think that they want what you have, but it has nothing to do with the physical has nothing to do with the tangible. I know you feel like you just got your hair done. I know you might feel like my brother that you got your new car and and now you're starting to dress different. But I need you to know it has nothing to do with the physical, has everything to do with the spiritual, everything to do with the spiritual. The Bible says that here it is Potiphar's own wife. Begin to look at Joseph. With eyes as to say is something specific, some specific, something particular about you. And I want to know what's going on. Let me tell you something. Whenever you begin to attract certain types of attention, you better make sure that you're discerning who sent that person to you. Who sent who sent you? Who sent you? Why did you come? I know you're in the same proximity with that person, but just because you've been around that person for some time does not necessarily mean that you need to be involved with them in an intimate way. There's so many people who fall, find themselves falling in love before they fall into purpose. What is your purpose concerning individuals around you? Guess what? Potiphar's wife thought it was OK to have Potiphar. But then she decided she wanted a piece of Joseph also. Man, I love some Joseph, man. I love the fact that Joseph said, you know what? I'm not going to be involved with you. I'm not going to have some fling going on with you. And then she said, well, if you don't want to have something ongoing, just lie with me. Just let's just be intimate. Let's just see where things go. Y'all remember uh, relationships you had like that? Where people trying to get the, 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 the relationship to advance and you're like, no, let's try to keep it right where it is. Let me tell you something. That's a trap that's been set. And I'm so thankful that Joseph was walking in an anointing. He had integrity, praise the Lord, so that we can know and understand that after you've been through enough hell, when you've been through enough affliction. You'll find yourself beginning to say, you know what? I'm not jumping into nothing too fast. I, I hear what you're saying. All that sounds really good. You know what? But I'm not jumping into anything right now. You know why? Because I understand that this is the perfect will of God for me right now. And you know what? I'm not going to gamble with anything that you have that I might lose Christ. I would much rather lose what you're trying to offer me before I lose Christ. You know why? Because the word says God actually spoke to Abraham and said, Abraham, I am your reward. What does that mean? That means more than getting a house, more than getting a car, more than getting a good relationship, more than fi finding yourself falling in love with some type of affiliation. Understand that the Lord is your reward. Man. 
The Lord says, I am your exceeding great reward. Hallelujah. Exceeding great reward. Father, I pray right now, Lord God, for everyone who's listening right now, Lord Jesus. Help them to experience you, Lord God, as their reward, Lord God. Help them experience you as their reward, Lord God. Father, when they find themselves wanting to pick up their phone, Lord God, to be distracted. When they find themselves, Lord God, wanting to look out the window, being distracted. When they find themselves wanting to walk next door to be distracted. Stop them in their tracks, Lord God. Convict them by your spirit, Lord God. And help them to remind themselves, Lord God, you are my reward in the name of Jesus. Let's try to make sure, yo, that we don't value anything above God. Because I need you to know and understand anything that you value above God becomes idolatry. Praise the Lord. Potiphar's wife is longing for Joseph. And Joseph is recognizing this is not the time this is not the place and you're definitely not the one the bible says after so much time she actually cornered joseph when no other person no other servant was in the house and she says i'm about to have you right now and look what joseph did to avoid touching this woman at all look at that I'm pretty sure he could have grabbed her hand and took her off, took his hand, her hand off of me, probably could have overpowered her. But the Bible says that the very thing she grabbed a hold of, because you know what? It was the second coat. <laughs> the second coat. What is the second coat? The second coat is when you learned how to serve. He learned how to serve in Potiphar's house under Potiphar's authority. And now because he can serve, this woman is trying to get him to compromise, to get some other things. And you know what? He said, you can keep this coat. You grabbing this coat that I just gained, you know what? But that's not the first coat I lost. I lost another coat when I learned how to survive, but now I'm learning how to serve. The Bible says that when she caught that coat, hallelujah, strategically, he did not touch her. And he slipped out of the coat and left the coat in her hands. The Bible says that she got to her husband. She let her husband know that he tried to do this. He tried to do that. You want to know what's a clear sign of being on the right track? The Bible says blessed are they when men shall persecute you, revile you and say all manner of evil against you falsely. Hallelujah. For great is your reward in heaven. Have you been persecuted? Bible says that we can't escape persecution. There's certain things that will happen. And you know what? It's not for you to feel condemned. The Bible says blessed are you when you are persecuted. The Bible says that you have exceeding great reward. You know what? If you're going through something right now, why don't you just give the Lord a shout of praise right now? If you're being persecuted right now, won't you just say hallelujah right now, Lord God? I give you praise. You know why? This is why the word says, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. This is why the apostle Paul says, what shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord? Shall persecution? No, sir. We shall continue to walk upright. You know what? The Bible says that after Joseph was able to get out of that second coat, the Bible says that he found himself in prison. But this time he was in Pharaoh's prison, under the king's prison, under his authority. Praise the Lord. And let's just pick up right there. Let's just see what the Lord has to say. Because the Bible says that even as Joseph, hallelujah, found himself, praise the Lord, in prison under Pharaoh's authority. Look at what the word says. If you look at Genesis 40, hallelujah, Genesis 40 and verse number one, hallelujah. 
Genesis 40 and verse number one, the word says, now after these things, the chief servant who had the care of the wine and the chief bread maker in Pharaoh's house did something against Pharaoh's orders. Hallelujah. Verse number two states, and Pharaoh was angry with his two servants, with the chief wine servant and the chief bread maker. Verse number three, and he put them in prison under the care of the captain of the army in the same prison where Joseph himself was shut up. Hallelujah. Verse number four says, And the captain put them in Joseph's care, and he did what was needed for them, and they were kept in prison for some time. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you something. After Joseph loses the second coat, after he's been taught, hallelujah, how to serve, now it's time to be taught how to perfect your skill. Hallelujah. See, serving is one thing because we always have to learn how to humble ourselves under authority. But the next thing that is so very important is we have gifts. We have talents. And guess what? We have to learn how to work those things out because if you don't perfect your gift and your skill, you will begin to confuse yourself with the gift. You are not your gift. Your gift is God that he has placed on the inside of you. We cannot take credit for the gifts. So that means we have to make sure because the Bible says no flesh shall glory in his presence. So that means we have to continue to make sure. Wait a minute. I'm not my gift. I need to humble myself. I'm not my gift. The Bible says if we exalt, if we humble ourselves rather under the mighty hand of God, the Bible says he will exalt us in due time. The Bible says that they take these other prisoners, put them in the same place with Joseph. And because the spirit of the Lord and the favor of God was with Joseph, guess what? He didn't change his demeanor. He began to serve them. He began to take care of them. Praise the Lord. That's sometimes what our problem is when we get offended. We don't know how to serve anymore. When we get mad, we don't know how to love anymore. When we get mad, we, Lord, we don't know how to be patient anymore. But the Lord wants you to learn and to understand that even though circumstances will change, you do not have to change with the circumstances. Hallelujah. Just begin to declare it, Lord, I'm going to be the same. I'm going to continue, Lord God. I'm going to continue to be found faithful. I'm going to continue to pray. I'm going to continue to humble myself. I'm going to continue to read my, read my word. Lord, you know what? I understand that I'm being tested right now. Let me get into your word. What does your word say when I'm tested? When I feel like my back is up against the wall and it appears that my enemies are doing whatever they want to do with me. Lord, I choose to submit myself to your word. Your word says, Lord God, that you are my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? We must remind ourselves daily. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Remind yourself daily the promises of God. And you know what that means when you're around people who are offended. You won't allow yourself to be offended with them. Praise the Lord. Just begin to declare I will not be offended. Just say it with me. Say I will not be offended in Jesus name. Guess what, y'all? It's amazing because even as we're talking about getting to this third coat, I want you to know it's something about threes. It's something about getting into a third dimension. It's something about a third dimension. When there's things that you're trying to do and you go through three different phases a lot of times. The Bible says that when the tabernacle of Moses was built, it was designed where there was three parts. There was the outer court. There was the inner court. 
then there was a holy place. We must always understand, hallelujah, that just as there is the Father, there is the Son, there is the Holy Spirit, the same way we understand that I am a spirit, I possess a soul, but I live in a body. You know, we got to understand something about threes. And here it is. Joseph is embarking upon this third coat. Praise the Lord. And I want you to understand that when it comes down to perfecting this skill, we must survive the temptation of compromise. You must survive the temptation of compromise. How do you get into compromise? Because sometimes you begin to have needs. You begin to have wants and desires and it appears that that you're being ignored. And all of a sudden, some Johnny come lately, some slick willy. Hallelujah. Some sweet Sally comes walking along trying to give you something. Praise the Lord. Something that your husband is not providing you. Something that your wife is not giving unto you. Or you feel as if you're being neglected or abandoned. At this point, it's very important for you to learn how to guard what it is the Lord has given unto you. Because someone may desire to want a piece of you. Guess what? If they only want a piece of you, that means that they're stepping in line with the enemy to make sure that you will never be made whole. Why would you let someone take a piece of you? Don't divide me. Don't divide me. Praise the Lord. I don't want to receive any division. Praise the Lord. No division. You will find yourself in a position where you would have to make a choice. Do you want or do you choose to settle with a position to appear like everything is good, to appear like you got it all together? But guess what? Behind the scenes, you have no power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No power. Or would you rather have the power even though you may not have the physical position? Oh, my goodness. Give me the power any day. Give me the power any day, any day, because the Bible says that 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 God had to tell Samuel. Don't cry over Saul. He's been rejected. He has no more power. I have someone already. He has the power. Praise the Lord. Matter of fact, he already slew a giant named Goliath. Praise the Lord. Guess what, y'all? When you get to the place where God is calling you, you've already slain some giants. Praise the Lord. Be encouraged to know that the hand of the Lord is upon you. You must perfect your skill. You must sharpen your discernment. To understand who is it that's trying to sidetrack you. Which disguise is the enemy trying to come at you in order to get you to give up what's most important for something that values nothing. In Jesus name. I will not just begin to declare it. I will not settle for a position because guess what? Just having a position is not a guarantee of having the power. Praise the Lord. The Bible says. Hallelujah. God wants us to understand who we are. As we get ready to wrap this up, y'all, understanding the cost of, of obtaining the third coat. If you look right here also, as a matter of fact, let's back up real quick. If we go right back to Genesis uh, 39, verse number 20, look what happens, y'all. Genesis 39 and verse 20. The Bible says, and Joseph's master took him and put him in prison in the place where the king's prisoners were kept in chains. Hallelujah. And he was there in the prison house. But the Lord was with Joseph. I told you, no matter how much it looks like you're at the bottom, you are at the top of the bottom and was good to him. And made Joseph the keeper of the prison, his friend. Praise the Lord. And the keeper of the prison put all the prisoners under Joseph's control. And he was responsible for whatever was done there. And the keeper of the prison gave no attention to anything which was under Joseph's care. Praise the Lord. 
because the Lord was with Joseph. Hallelujah. And the Lord made everything he did go well. Everything he did. It went absolutely well. Declare it right now. I don't care how much because I'm going to tell you something. Your flesh is telling you you're at the bottom. Your flesh is telling you give up. Your flesh is telling you you're on your way down. Your flesh is looking around and saying, what are the circumstances dictating what? But you don't have to look to the circumstances. Look to your source. Hallelujah. The Bible says that even though Joseph is in prison, he made him in authority in the name of Jesus. Top of the bottom. Wherever your bottom is, you're at the top. Wherever your bottom is. Isn't it amazing? That the keeper of the prison begin to have the same testimony with Joseph in prison, just like Potiphar had when he was in Potiphar's home. Praise the Lord. No matter how much you might try to hold me down, I will rise. I will rise. I declare those of you who are watching right now. You are rising right now. Just as sure as. As you're under the sound of my voice, I declare right now that you're rising. God is allowing you to hear a word like this, that you may begin to elevate, that you may begin to grow like never before. I need you to know that the Lord is putting some things in position for you right now. I need you to know that there is a shift that's taking place. I need you to understand that there is a season that is changing in your life right now. As a matter of fact, some of you will begin to have brand new experiences within three days. I need you to understand somebody who you had thought that 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 they were totally out of your life for a long season. God is about to change some things right now in your life. And within three days. There will be some people that will strategically get a chance to contact you and you will know this is the Lord's doing. I want you to know right now, even as I was going through some financial challenges, the Lord began to cause things to happen. I didn't know where it was coming from. And then just the other day, as a matter of fact, two days ago, a woman of God contacted me out of the blue and said, man of God, I hadn't talked to this woman in maybe six to eight months. She said, man of God, I just want you to know the Lord put you on my heart. She told, she said, the Lord told me to send a hundred dollars to you. And I said, what? I said, praise the Lord. So by the time I talked to her the next day, she said, the Lord said, I didn't tell you a hundred. I told you two hundred. Let me tell you something. I know there may be people that don't understand what's going on. But if you would only trust the Lord. There are resources that the Lord has that you have no clue of. And sometimes you have to shut you have to you have to shut the noise out of your ears and begin to maintain your focus on God. And I guarantee you the Lord is moving on your behalf. I want to encourage you, please feel free if the Lord does something or when the Lord speaks something to you. Please contact us. Look at our information. It's on the screen. If you look right below here, you can actually see our email address. Why don't you find us even on Facebook under in his image, Christ International Ministries. Praise the Lord. And please, if the Lord leads you to support in any way, please contact us. Give us some feedback right now. Let us know whether or not the Lord is blessing you. And I want you to be encouraged because God is elevating you now. In Jesus name.